Welcome to Coping with Cancer Creative Expression Part 1, a Canadian Cancer Society webcast. This webcast is generously supported by RBC, Roche, Merck, and AstraZeneca. My name is Lacey Horta. I'm a Cancer Connection Specialist and the moderator of CancerConnection.ca. I'll be your host. Joining me today is Sid Palacio, Founder and Executive Director for the Art for Cancer Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit charity focused on bringing free creative programs to people living with cancer. Welcome, Sid. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. In today's webcast, we'll be learning more about using art to help patients and caregivers bring their experiences to life. Today's session is part one of our two-part series. In part one, guest speaker Sid will teach you to connect your heart with art as you master the four E's, explore, express, engage, and escape. From time to time, Sid will be referencing some useful resources or links to websites that inform our discussion. Please click the resource widget on the bottom of your screen to get access to these resources. Let's get started. Thank you, Lacey. I'm going to focus today on three key areas. First, I'm going to share with you why I believe in the healing power of art. Next, I will share with you some direct feedback from our cancer patients um, on the benefits of creativity as they have found it. And I will end with some suggestions for how you can start exploring your creativity. This slide will come as no surprise to most of you. Cancer impacts one's quality of life on a number of fronts. You may experience feelings of anxiety, mostly about the unknown. You worry and can't sleep. You are tired, either due to lack of sleep or treatments or both. For some of you, your career is very important, and you may have had to put that on hold. You're not feeling up to going out with your friends or entertaining in your home. All this may lead to a feeling that you have lost yourself, that you are less in control and less confident. You may feel depressed, and you may fear the future. And most will experience not only physical, but also emotional pain. Now, not to take anything away from the feelings and symptoms of a cancer patient, but I also believe that most of these feelings impact not only the cancer patient directly, but also their loved ones and care providers. I believe that within a household, when someone is living with cancer, everyone in that circle is also living with cancer in some way. Now, let's discover how creative expression can help. The idea that creative expression can benefit the healing process has been around for many years and in many cultures. There are a number of research studies suggesting that participation in creative experiences can reduce anxiety, promote relaxation, and improve the overall quality of life of people living with cancer. Creative experiences in this context include, but are not limited to, the visual art, music, creative writing. It can even include activities that you do with your hands, like knitting, woodworking, Whenever your mind is engaged and you are using your imagination and being innovative and exploring the possibilities, you are very likely engaged in a creative experience. For the purposes of today's webcast, I will be focusing on the visual arts and activities like painting. When you are creating, you become so focused. You are engrossed in and fully absorbed by what you're doing. Your imagination is fully engaged, and you become captivated by the process. You lose all track of time, and you may feel like you're ent you've entered an altered state. feeling of great bliss and deep relaxation comes over you, and the right side of your brain is fully engaged. The body is made to heal itself. 
and it heals fast when it is in a state of deep relaxation. In a state of deep relaxation, our body's balance and harmony is restored. Its self-healing power is enhanced, and our immune system is strengthened. On a day-to-day basis, the state of deep relaxation that comes from being involved in a creative activity helps one cope a little bit better with a difficult life situation, like living with cancer. Next, I'd like to give you a little bit of history on how my love affair with painting started. Isn't he just adorable? This is my grandson, Spencer, whom I give full credit for the creative journey that I have been on for almost 10 years now. I have experienced firsthand the healing power of art. Let me explain. It all started when Spencer asked me how to paint a rose. I have never taken an art class in my life. So I told Spencer, sweetie, I just don't know how, but let's see what we can find out. Through our online search, we found all kinds of videos on how to draw and paint roses. It was fascinating to watch. And when they suggested that anyone could learn, I just had to order a painting kit. As soon as the painting kit arrived, I started to play with it. The more I explored, the more I enjoyed getting lost in that whole process and feeling very relaxed. It soon became evident that I was the one playing with this painting kit and not Spencer. I used to get up at 4 in the morning to get a couple of hours of playtime in. This became my sanctuary, which enabled me to cope a little bit better with the rest of my day. You see, at the time, my mom had just been diagnosed with advanced cancer, and my days were filled with taking her to chemo, radiation, treatments, tests, doctor's visits, and all of the stressful stuff that is part of one's cancer journey and those that are along that journey with them. When my dad got diagnosed with cancer within months of us losing my mom, I don't think I could have kept my wits about had it not been for my daily dose of painting, my escape to my sanctuary. And that's why I always say creative expression through painting was the glue that kept me together when I lost both my parents to cancer within a span of 15 months. My experience with using art as a means of coping, first of the illness and then the passing of both my parents, made me curious about the connection between art, creativity, and healing. I did quite a bit of investigation and found extensive references to the healing power of art, which I had personally experienced. I was needing to give back to share with others what I had experienced. And in part, I wanted to honor the memory of my beloved parents. And that's why I founded a charity, the Art for Cancer Foundation with a focus on bringing the healing power of creativity to people living with cancer. We offer free creative programs, not only to cancer patients, but also to their families and care providers. While we're physically located in the west end of Toronto, our reach is the greater Toronto area through the strategic collaborations that we have formed with the likes of Wellspring, Gilda's Club, and Elixir, just to name a few of the cancer support organizations where we bring our creative program to their members. In creating the Art for Cancer Foundation, our vision was to create and deliver programs that enabled our participants to escape 
escape to a special sanctuary and relax, to explore their creativity, to express their feelings through art, and to engage with others who would understand what they're going through. Next, I'd like to share with you the feedback that we have received over the past five years from our workshop participants. You will see a number of recurring themes on what has helped them and why they believe in the power of creativity. I will also introduce you to some of our workshop participants that are uh, and their art. They are part of a video series that we will be launching later this year entitled Creative Forces. There are 11 individuals uh, being featured talking about how creating art has helped them cope with their cancer. If you would like to receive further information on this series, you can subscribe to our monthly newsletter through our website or follow us on Facebook or simply drop us a line. By the way, it goes without saying that we respect our members' privacy greatly, so any information about them that is released here is for their full knowledge and consent. And in keeping with the four E's, Let's start with the notion of being able to escape. When was the last time you forgot you were living with cancer? Or you lost complete track of time because you were so enjoying what you were doing? That is the power of being able to escape to a creative activity and to enter a state of deep relaxation. The art that you will see in these slides were all created at our workshops. So these are all uh, these are all pieces of art that were created by the members. The creative process relieves stress. This is the number one benefit that we hear time and time again from our participants. They tell us how relaxed, calm, and centered they feel when they are creating. And here are some direct quotes. When I focus on art making, everything else disappears. I don't think about having cancer. Like meditation and yoga, it focuses my mind away from cancer and leaves me feeling calm and centered. I'd like to introduce you to the niece, or this as she likes to be called. She is one of the individuals being featured in our Creative Forces video. Here she is displaying some of the art that she has created at River Cancer Foundation Workshop. This is 87 years old, and she has been coming to the workshops for a number of years now. Not only has this been diagnosed with cancer herself, she has had to also deal with her boyfriend's cancer scare, as well as her daughter's cancer diagnosis all at the same time. She is indeed an inspiration to us all, as are um, the folks that come and attend our workshops. There's something quite therapeutic about using one's hands in the creative process. And while we're focusing on the visual arts and painting, the same could be said for many creative activities one can do with one's hands. Again, here's a direct quote from one of our workshop assistants. Using my hands to create art relaxes my mind and calms my nerves. I shut off the constant chatter in my mind and relax into creating something beautiful with my hands. Next, I'd like you to meet Lynn, who's also featured in our Creative Forces series. Len was diagnosed with advanced prostate cancer four years ago. And here's a direct quote from him. In the process of creating art, I was not thinking about my cancer. It was truly a healing process for me. Here, uh, Len is displaying some of his art, and in his hand, he's holding a piece of art that was created by using a photo transfer into stone 
Len shows a picture of his dog, Luca, as a keepsake. Creative exploration is all about getting lost in the process. It's about trying something new, and for some, it will be about picking up a paintbrush for the first time. We use acrylic paints most of the time. They're so versatile, and it allows you to easily do over if you don't like what you're getting. Wouldn't life be wonderful if we could do that all the time? It's quite liberating, and of course, a key enabler to you being able to explore. Time and time again, we hear from our workshop participants that they have learned something new beyond creating art. For some, it's about learning to let go and not be afraid of the outcome. For others, it's about unleashing their inner child and discovering the possibilities. And here, again, are some direct quotes. I haven't had so much fun since I was a child. I laugh, I play, I use my imagination to create art that is totally about me. Creating something from inside of me opened a whole new part of myself and let me see that anything is possible. Meet Jessica, who is also in our Creative Forces uh, videos. Jessica talks about how she discovered something new about herself. And she also talks about the first painting that she did at our workshop. She was feeling like she was in a battle with her cancer. And what she re realized at the end of that process in looking at her painting, her painting was bursting with color. And she felt hopeful that there was still color in her life. Being able to create something with your hands that you can look, touch, and feel proud of brings back in some way that wonderful feeling of accomplishment that many feel may feel is lost because of the focus on their cancer. Again, here are some direct quotes. I've always been afraid of making art, but now I don't worry about what others think of me or the outcome. I just enjoy the process and have been pleasantly surprised at what I have created. I have actually created art that I'm proud of. Next, I'd like you to meet Van Mala. Also being featured in our Creative Forces series, Van Mala first picked up a paintbrush at our For Cancer Foundation. And look at the art that she's displaying and has created. Now, she is not alone. About half of our workshop participants first pick up a paintbrush at one of our workshops. They uh, have the courage to come and try it. Just try it once. If they don't like it, they don't have to come back. Sometimes there's no words to describe how you're feeling when you are living with cancer. So letting your hands do the talking is a great way to express yourself. And there are so many ways that you can express how you're feeling through art. The colors you choose, the vigor of your brush stroke, the images that you choose to paint, these all combine to tell others and to remind you of what is in your heart through art. Again, some more direct quotes. Making art provides an outlet for expressing my deepest dreams, hopes, and fears. I didn't realize I had so much that needed to be said, but which I had no words for. Art became my voice. When I am at the art workshop, I spend the time connecting with my inner self without the constant fear and the man that cancer puts on my life. This time, is sacred and healing for me. This is Tracy, who will also be in our video series. Tracy is living with brain cancer, which affects her memory and language. 
And I just love the way Tracy describes the whole art experience. To quote her, creating art was like learning another language. It brought me inner excitement. Art records our personal experience, and Lisa Mark, which says, I was here. Some direct quote. I'm creating keepsakes for my children and my grandchildren. If I had never had cancer, I probably would never have created art. This is one of the gifts I have discovered on my cancer journey. Well, imagine having cancer and getting the gift of art. Next, I'd like you to meet Marsha, also part of our video series. One year after her retirement, Marsha was diagnosed with two types of cancer. And through her cancer journey and the creative process, she realized that she needed to prioritize and that she had to be the priority. She was empowered to put herself first. There is something very powerful about engaging with others who understand what you're going through. We have found that the opportunity for our workshop participants to be with others who are also living with cancer it's a key reason that they keep coming back. I like to say that they originally come to try and create art and for the creativity, but they keep coming back for the sense of community that they enjoy. What they have told us is that they feel supported and less alone when they're creating art with others who are experiencing the same thing that they are. And this is one of the many ways that attending a workshop at Art for Cancer Foundation is different from a regular art class in an art school or, or a community center. Let's meet Camille. Camille quotes, when I come through these doors, I know I'm going to be embraced. Here we see some of the art that she has created at our workshop. In her video, she talks about the importance of being with others who fully understand what you're going through. And Camille really values that sense of community. Camille travels two hours each way to come to our workshop. While on one hand, um, it talks to how she values that sense of community. On the other hand, I am saddened that we don't have more of these creative programs available. Some more quotes. I meet new people, make new friends. Um, I have learned so much from others who are going through the same thing that I am. I look forward to these creative workshops and have even changed appointments to make sure I don't miss one. Also, we're not a cancer support group by design. We offer support by default. Our participants will often share with each other uh, what's going on with their treatments and side effects and clinical trials, especially during our multi-week program uh, where we have programs that are up to eight weeks long with the same group attending, and this makes for deep relationships to be formed. But more often than not, the word cancer won't even be uttered in the workshop, and that's fine too. Next, I'd like to introduce Maria. Maria's direct quote, it allows me to forget my diagnosis and brings a lot of peace and happiness to be here to create. Maria has been participating in art for cancer workshops for a while now. As an art teacher, she misses sharing her knowledge of art with others while she's dealing with her cancer. Recently, Maria has delivered uh, a number of watercolor workshops to our participants. The workshops have been extremely well received, and I think Maria was very pleased to be able to give back this way. 
Now I'm going to share with you some ideas on how you can start creating. And if you've never painted before, I urge you to try it, at least once. Of course, if you live in the greater Toronto area, you can register for a free workshop with our Click Answer Foundation. Simply visit our website and register for one of the many workshops listed. And if you wish to start receiving monthly notifications about all of the different programs that we offer, subscribe to our newsletter, our website, www.artforcancerfoundation.org. Our workshops are normally three and a half hours in length, and they're typically held in the morning, uh, weekdays, and we also have weekend workshops. You don't need any prior experience or any art supplies. Just come and try it. For those who don't really live in the area, I'd like to offer up a few uh, options for you to consider. Check with your local community center. Most have art programs available, either for free or free. And of course, in this uh, digital world, digital painting is also available. All you need is an iPad, Android tablet. You can even use your iPhone. And I highly recommend an application called ArtRage. It has all kinds of wonderful paint brushes that imitate the look of acrylic paint or oil paint. Uh, there's also various pencils. And this is a great way to try something out uh, at home or while you're going through your um, chemo treatment and not create a mess. Now, you can also pick up some initial art supplies and paint at home. All you need are some acrylic paint, some brushes and canvases. There are a number of uh, free instru instructional videos available that you can follow along if you wish. And another option is to join us for our first webcast. It's a paint-along webcast we're going to be doing on May 31st. We're delighted to be able to bring you this special paint-along on May 31st. Our special artist will be the talented Lori Sky. She will show us step by step how to paint one of these adorable bears. Lori has done this workshop at Art for Cancer Foundation a few times, and it's always very well received. The pictures you see here were from the last workshop she did. And I'm always amazed at how everyone receives the same instruction, and yet everyone is able to create something slightly different that is all about their uniqueness. Now, if you're thinking, I don't have any art supplies, how can I paint along? Believe it or not, for under $20, you can get all of the art supplies you need to get started painting at home and to join us with the Paint Along on May 31st. When it comes to investing in art supplies, my advice to folks is that you can start cheap and gain some experience before you start investing in higher end products. You could spend, you could buy um, a brush for $30 or for $3. If you buy a $30 brush and you leave it out with acrylic paints for too long, it will dry out and there goes your brush. So again, until you gain experience with the media, my advice is to stick with the cheaper stuff. All of the main supplies listed here, uh, can be found at your local Dollarama or similar type dollar store in your area, if you will. I just want to go over the supplies quickly. So we're dealing with acrylic paint, and we're going to get the three primary colors. I think I picked up a peacock blue, um, a bright red, a bright yellow, and of course black and white. Then you need something to paint. And this is dark but you can certainly uh, pick it. Here they have a brush that are a great starter kit. You'll need a water container. Get an empty yogurt container and fill it up with water for you to uh, put your brush in. A paper towel and a palette to lay out your paint, like a styrofoam plate. 
And of course, most important, get an apron or an old shirt and cover your clothes. You cannot. It's nearly impossible to get acrylic paint off your clothes once it dries. And if you're using your kitchen table, make sure that you've got the plastic um, cloth laid out. So in closing, I'd like to invite you to register for our paint along on May 31st. And if you are in the area, please check out Work for Cancer Foundation. Please consider trying creativity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sid, and thank you everyone for joining us. I hope everyone's enjoyed this webcast as much as I did. If you know someone who'd benefit from viewing this webcast, please direct them to cancerconnection.ca where it can be found in our on-demand library. Also, please see the resource widget for a link to register for Part 2, our Paint Along. If you're not already a member of our online community, I invite you to join us at cancerconnection.ca. Our community is a great place to connect with others, discuss your personal journey, and discuss topics of interest like the information that was shared in today's webcast. Please take a moment to fill out our survey by clicking on the clipboard widget at the bottom of your screen. Your feedback is so important to us and it assists us with the development of future webcasts. Stay tuned to cancerconnection.ca for information on our next webcast. New day, new you. Get the most from your daily nutrition and exercise choices. Thank you and have a great day.